Hi, I'm Yav Columbus, and we'll talk about optimal collaterals in multi-enterprise investment networks. This is a joint work with Moshe Bobayov and Eyal Winter. So we'll talk about uh, settings where there are firms that raise capital from investors. And these investors, they are facing strategic risk in the sense that uh, their gains or losses may depend on the actions of other investors. And we'll talk about collateral contracts as a mechanism design tool in these investment games and about investment networks, which I'll present. So let's start from an example. Let's say that uh, there is a firm that raises capital for some enterprise. And this firm needs to raise at least $4 million to cover uh, the costs of this enterprise. And the total returns for investors are going to be the total investment amount minus the cost, and this is going to be multiplied by two, which is some interest, two in our example. And that is if the cost is covered. If the cost here is not covered, then there are going to be zero return, returns to investors. And the total return is going to be divided between the investors proportionally to their investment amounts. Well, let's say that Alice, Bob, and Carol represent firms that consider investment opportunities of $3 million each in that enterprise. So in the drawing here, the arrows point in the direction uh, towards the investor, so it's in the direction of the returns. And this is going to be a one-shot game in which every player needs to decide whether to invest, which we call cooperate, and then he will get whatever he gets from the returns, or, or not to invest, which we call defect, and then he can keep the investment amount. So let's look at some investment scenarios. Uh, first, if Alice invests alone, then the total investment is $3 million. And this doesn't cover the cost of the enterprise. And so there are going to be zero return uh, for Alice. And Alice would prefer to defect and keep the $3 million. The second scenario, Alice and Bob invest, but Carol defects. And here the total investment is $6 million, which does cover the cost. So the return, total return is $4 million, and the return for Alice is going to be uh, $2 million, and so Alice still prefers to defect. In the third scenario, everyone invests, and here the total investment is $9 million, and I'm going to claim that this is an efficient, uh, going to be an efficient outcome. Uh, the total return is $9 million minus the cost times 2, which gives uh, $10 million. And here Alice has profits, so she prefers to cooperate. Uh, so some basic observations from this example are uh, first that indeed there is a game between these investors and all cooperate, the profile where everyone decides to invest is an equilibrium of the game. Uh, but uh, all defect is also an equilibrium and this is not an efficient equilibrium. So we're going to ask how to induce a unique equilibrium of full investment. And we're going to use collateral contracts and study how they can do that. And a collateral contract is a financial instrument that aims to give security for investors. Of course, securing collaterals has some cost, like buying insurance, and a firm would prefer to give less collateral if it can. So, uh, the types of collaterals, uh, collateral contracts, we consider they provide limited insurance for an investor for the invested amount. Uh, if there are going to be profits, the return is more than the investment, then the collateral is not realized. And the payoff uh, of the investor is just the return from the investment. But if there are losses, then the payoff for an investor that has collateral of amount C is going to be the return, whatever he got from the investment, plus the amount of the collateral, but this is going to be kept at the investment amount because this is only insurance against losses. So let's look at some investment scenarios now with collaterals. Uh, so first, let's say that Alice has a collateral of half a million dollars. In our first scenario where she invests alone, still the investment doesn't cover the cost. So she has zero returns from the enterprise the situation is a little bit better because she has a, a utility of a half a million because she has this collateral. 
The second scenario, Alice and Bob invest. Total investment as before is six million. Alice is going to bet to get uh, two million dollars from the return, and she has also half a million uh, dollars, uh, additional half a million dollars from the collateral. So she has 2.5. And in the third scenario, everyone invests. As before, Alice has profits, and so the collateral is not realized. Now let's look at a different scenario where uh, only Alice and Bob invest, but now Alice has a larger collateral of $2 million. So what uh, should Alice do? Alice here has a utility of at least $3 million anyway, because she's get, going to get $2 million from the uh, enterprise, uh, plus $1 million from the collateral, so exactly $3 million in this uh, scenario. Uh, so here she prefers to uh, cooperate. We assume a tie-breaking in favor of, uh, of investing can think about it as some additional epsilon utility for investing. So how to induce a unique equilibrium of full investment? Uh, so uh, let's look at the following collaterals in our example. Let's say that Alice has a collateral of $3 million and we call this a full collateral because it covers the full amount of, the, of her investment. And Bob is going to have a collateral of $1 million, which we call a partial collateral, because it covers only part of the investment amount. And Carol is not going to have any collateral at all, so zero collateral. So what's, what is going to happen here? Now, Alice has a dominant strategy to cooperate because she gets at, at least $3 million uh, because she has a full collateral. Now, Bob knows that Alice is going to cooperate, and he knows that in this situation where they both uh, cooperate, uh, his return is going to be at least $2 million. But he also has this $1 million collateral. So the utility for Bob is going to be from cooperating at least $3 million, and he also prefers to cooperate. Now, Carol knows all this. She knows that Alice and Bob are going to cooperate, and so she prefers to cooperate as well, reaching to the all cooperate strategy profile. So we get that all cooperate is a unique mesh equilibrium with these collaterals. It's easy to see that it's unique because we what we just did is iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies, but it must lead uh, to a unique equilibrium. And the total collateral here in this example is 4 million. Uh, and in fact, this is optimal for this uh, example. You can't give any less collateral and secure a unique equilibrium. And so the problem that we define and analyze is the collateral minimization problem. that asks to find the minimum sum collaterals to induce a unique equilibrium of full investment. And this is going to be challenging for various reasons. Uh, first, there may be many investors, heterogeneous investments, and so this may become uh, combinatorially uh, complex. Uh, you need to figure out how to define and solve an optimization problem. And second, uh, we're going to look uh, at investment networks. And some of the investors uh, may actually be capital raising firms themselves. They may, may have their own enterprises. So the situation may look more like this. And uh, in this case, uh, investors may reach, can reach a state of default if they don't manage to, if they are capital raising firms and they don't manage to raise sufficient capital to cover the costs of their enterprises. So they may reach default and be unable to invest. So players uh, need to think not only about whether their co-investors are willing to invest, but also if they would be able to invest. And this adds strategic risk that may propagate in the network due to the risk of default cascades. And I'll demonstrate uh, default cascades uh, just now. So let's look at this uh, toy example, uh, this network where uh, the nodes that are marked with uh, numbers are uh, firms that have their own enterprises and they are raising capital. Let's say in this example that uh, every firm, uh, every capital raising firm needs all its three investors to cover the costs of its enterprise. Uh, and let's assume that uh, the one of the players here on the top left it decides for some reason not to invest. So what, what's going to happen is that firm number six is going to reach a state of default because uh, the cost is not covered. 
then firm number six will not be able to invest in the enterprise of firm number five, which is going to be in default as well. And this propagates uh, to all the enterprises in the network in this example. And so notice that uh, these players here on the, uh, at the bottom, when they make their decision, they need to consider not only the decisions of their co-investors in the same enterprise, but also the decisions of, uh, in fact, all the other players in this network. Uh, so this is a network effect and things become more complex. And we're going to ask what are the effects of network structure on the optimal collateral scheme. So overview of our main results. Uh, first, we have results that are general to any network, uh, general characterizations. And then we make a distinction between uh, cyclic and acyclic investment networks. We show that uh, the situation is quite different in these two uh, settings. So uh, for the general characterizations, first we show that a unique equilibrium implies dominant solvability. Whenever you can induce a, a unique equilibrium using collateral contracts, then this unique equilibrium uh, must be reached or can be, it, it must be reached by iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies. The game is dominant solvable. And then uh, we talk about existence of solutions by collateral contracts. We show that there are networks where a solution does not exist. And we show uh, that solvability can be determined in polynomial time. And in fact, we show exactly how you can uh, identify problematic structures in the network. You can read more details in the paper. And we also talk about, talk about computational complexity and we show that in its general uh, form, the collateral minimization problem is NP hard. And the intuition is that if you have many investors in the same enterprise, uh, then you're facing a kind of a knapsack like problem where you need to decide uh, which investor is going to get the larger collaterals. So this is basic intuition. And when we look at the acyclic networks, we have these results that say that in any acyclic investment networks, first, a unique equilibrium can always be induced by collateral contracts. And second, if the degree in the network is bounded, if the number of investors per enterprise is bounded, then there exists a polynomial time procedure that we uh, show exactly uh, to calculate the optimal scheme of collateral contracts. And third, uh, we show that the network structure does not necessitate, in fact, any excess collaterals. So this additional uh, strategic risk uh, from the network does not add does not require additional collateral. In fact, the collateral contracts that are optimized for each enterprise independently ignoring the rest of the network form together an optimal scheme for the entire network. Now, when we look at the networks with cycles, uh, things are different. First, there exist uh, networks, investment networks where a unique equilibrium cannot be induced by collateral contracts, even if you give full collaterals to all investors. And we show, as I said, exactly how to find these uh, cases and characterize them. Second, uh, when you have cycles in the network, the collateral minimization problem uh, becomes NP-hard even for bounded uh, degree networks. And finally, uh, even uh, in cyclic networks, even if you have a solution and you can find it, we show that uh, the total collateral in, in, in an optimal collateral scheme may be arbitrarily higher than the corresponding uh, non-network environment, where the sets of investors and capital raisers are disjoint sets. So in conclusion, uh, we study investments in networks and we study the role of collateral contracts to affect these uh, investment games. And uh, we define the collateral minimization problem that asks to find the minimum collaterals to induce full investment as a unique Nash equilibrium. And we show that in acyclic investment networks, a solution first always exists. Uh, and then a uh, collaterals can be optimized for each firm independently, ignoring the rest of the network. And uh, there are no added collaterals due to the structure of the network. So the same collaterals would be given also in a non-network environment. And in cyclic networks, 
we show that the solution uh, does not always exist and cycles can increase the minimum total collateral that is required. And finally, in cyclic networks, uh, cycles imply further computational hardness. Thank you. Uh, let's thank you all for the uh, talk and questions. Uh, if there are no questions, I have one. Um, so I think uh, you understand correctly that your model assumes the uh, return in the linear function as uh, as the total investment minus the, the minimum cost, right? And my question is, does your result generalize to the setting where the uh, return function is a nonlinear function? Uh, and will that make your conclusions very different or maybe the problem even becoming very different? The total return, yes, it's linear. It's uh, the investment amount minus the cost with some uh, interest. Um, the return for an investor depends also on the investment amounts of the other investors, right? Because it's proportional. Depends also on how this uh, is partitioned. Um, I think that uh, if if you have in mind something like. Uh, well, you, you're talking about the interest rate that it would be you know, dependent or uh, what, uh, uh, what exactly do you mean by non -linear? So I'm wondering like, if this, this total return is not a linear function of uh, investment minus cost, maybe super linear. If mm -hmm. like you have more money, I can um, okay. make the same much better. Yeah, yeah something like that. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting setting. Um, we didn't analyze this uh, setting, but we do have uh, some insights on this, that uh, if it's going to be a, a sufficiently increasing, I think that the, uh, the main results should hold, uh, but uh, the analysis becomes more complicated. We need to preserve uh, some kind of a monotonicity uh, if, for instance, uh, for some amounts, there is going to be a domain where the returns are de decreasing, uh, things uh, will definitely break. So um, I think that analyzing a more complex increasing uh, function of the total return minus the cost uh, is interesting, but in some, uh, under some assumptions, I think uh, main results would remain.